Hello, I'm Azai. Welcome back to Kichiko Rants. Just came back from the gym, ate some food, and surprisingly, my internet was actually going down throughout the whole day. And thankfully, it's actually back on now, so I can instantly upload this after the the recording is finished and I'm done editing the video. Other than that. I'm starting to go to a physiotherapist. Is that what you call it? Basically like a massage place that specializes in like a sport massage or something. Because I've been having some trouble with my like upper back. So tomorrow I'll be going there. And you know, like on the weekends, I said that I wasn't going to be recording any session. This mostly applies for people on Patreon. But if I'm not really going to my sister's place, I feel like I will be recording a session on the weekends too. It really depends if I go over there or not. But I think that today or this week I wouldn't be going there. So tomorrow probably I'll be recording two more sessions. But yes, enough about that. Let's continue on with the game. Let me try to make a short recap about what happened last time. Uh, what's going on here? Oh, didn't we already see this? I guess we did see this, but uh, that was like the beginning of turn. Wait, was it really that beginning of turn? That was like a really long beginning of turn. Okay, that is actually the one that I that I ended off on. So yeah, that was the event where Merim went to a dungeon and she got hurt. If you didn't have the Genius Hospital, she would be dead right then and there. So there would be no more exploring with Merim. And then Fuka there. That uh, is showing you that you will be able to go to Orochi's cave. But alright, enough about that. Last time, I also, like, uh, levied multiple places and found Freya fairly quickly. She's actually here in Allen, So let's do that real quick. There we go. I've got no more business in Allen. Maybe I should get going. Rance was about to order a withdrawal when something happened. Hmm? Right across from where Rance was, a black shadow passed from one building to another. Based on the human size, it seems to be a hu based on the size, it seems to be a human. Suspicious. Hey, a few of you come with me. A suspicious shadow moved. Rance chased the shadow along with the group of people that came with at his order. I feel like that is actually a really weird sentence. That shadow has to be that ninja woman. I'll definitely catch her this time. Let's pincer attack. You all, surround her from over there. And Rance's order, his subordinates went to the opposite back alley. Yeah. When Rance turned a corner, the shadow turned the corner ahead of him at the same time. Ah, there she is. Oh, that's not actually Rance. That must be the subordinate. Just when Rance's subordinate said something, the shadow faced Rance and charged. Right where I thought you'd go, suspicious woman. <laughs> Finally cornered you. Prepare yourself, suspicious woman. Huh. Do you know for sure something will be done? What did you say? Man, they really changed Freya's character in the remake or in Rance 9. She's not this... Uh, what do you call it? Flim- not flimsy. Fl I don't know the exact word that I'm looking for. The exact adjective I'm looking for. But you know, like loose mouth, right? There must be a better way to say that. Freya puffed up her cheeks and grabbed Norimaki's neck. Whoa! A dazzling beam of light fired from Norimaki's eyes from- 
from on Freya's shoulder. See, that sentence also doesn't seem right. Gah. What? Soon enough, their voices were far away. Shit, was that a distraction? But, a ninja hired by Hellman. What a waste. What a girl though. And brimming with confidence. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And now, you actually have to go to the merchant to get an item to capture Freya for the fourth time. It should be here. There we go, Ninja Bird Lime. This is what we need. It's only really cheap, so 3,000 gold. I also have a lot of money now, so I think I'm, I can afford buy, to buy one of these. Increase the unit's defense by one, sure. Alright, we're good. So... Let's see, who do we talk to right now? Let me take a look at who we should be focusing on. After we're done with Freya, I'm gonna try to get Gandhi. Let's see... We can't do anything with Maria unless until we build the the place that we need to. We can't do anything with Mill. We can't do anything with Millie. We can't do anything with Shizuka. That is so annoying. What can we do right now? I feel like there's not really that many things that we can do. Let's see, Lelyukov. We can't do anything with Lelyukov. Nothing with Cream. Nothing with Freak. Can I do something with Syl? Why is Syl not here, by the way? This is actually surprising. To recruit her as a general again, summon her in the harem. Oh, there we go. I need to actually summon her in the harem. To put her back into the party. So that's what we're gonna be doing after this. After that, visit the... Call her in the harem twice. Did I call Soul twice or did I call her once? I also need to call Soul twice to get bound. He's not really good, but more unit is always good. More units. I really need to find someone to talk to though right now. Hmm. I don't really need to talk to Cream. Damn it! Who the hell do I talk to though right now? There's really no one that I can talk to? I guess Kentaro. But talking to him like more and more is like kinda useless, right? Feels like it's such a waste of time. Let me see, is there anything with Miki, Megalus, and you know, Kentaro? Satella. Okay, I need to talk to Satsala twice, and then there's gonna be something happening, okay. Alright, I'll talk to Satsala then. Hmm, maybe I'll meet with Satsala. I think I already talked to her once, I need to talk to her twice to trigger an event. Lisa's castle, Satsala's room. Satsala and Caesar were there. Caesar filled a bucket with a drawing of a uh, mock Pio on it with water and placed it next to Satsala. What the hell is a mock Pio? Satala was kneading clay. <laughs> Making another wimpy clay doll? Friends barge in without knocking. By the way, I've got something else to talk about today. Thus far, you've been too sensitive for me to really make you a woman, but... Today's the day. I'm thinking I'll gently take your virginity. <laughs> Stop making that scary face. I know your weakness. Rance grinned and reached her hand to Satala's ass. Satala jumped away. Uh, hey! Don't run away! Satala turned to face Rance again while she was in Caesar's arms. 
Huh. That's what you were thinking? Yeah, we I gotta fight her to get into the harem. We also need to actually beat her though. Fine, I'll fight you. Should be quite easy since we have like uh, 2,000 or 1,000 plus like battle units. And Satila only has 200. The not good part about this is that we have to use up our party. Or not party, but you know, our units. So it's gonna use up like both our units, which is kind of a shame. A duel, by the way. This is not really a duel, Satila. There we go. Come on, Satila. God damn it. All right. Lisa's castle, Satila's room. Satila was on her hands and knees at Rance's feet, defeated. <laughs> Looks like I won. You're so weak. Com I mean, considering she only has 200 units, she's not really that weak, Rance. You got a thousand plus. Satila fell with her face to the floor and tears streamed from her eyes. Now, Satila, keep your promise. Rance reached out his hands and touched Satila's ass. Patreon.com says Zekios King. I can't believe this is already happening. That alone made Satila's body react and she sh shuddered hard. There, there, there. Rance poked Satila all over. Oh, I guess that was supposed to be like there, there, there. Satila groaned in pain, maybe because her injuries hurt. Well, whatever. I'll let you off easy today since we just fought. If I call you to my room, then come. Make sure you're all cleaned up. <laughs> Triumphant, Rance laughed loudly and left the room. Okay, that was pretty good. Who should we heal now, though? I should probably heal up Layla. Nah, I'll probably heal up Boris here. I can't really heal up uh, Rance right now. Who is going to level up soon? Rance is going to level up, but he can't unequip Chaos, sadly. Layla's at 67. Boris is 83. Cordoba, 14. Rick is going to level up. So, do I have... Safety Bonsai, Popularity Staff with Rick. I really don't know how to use the Fog card, so if you guys know how to use this Fog card, do tell me. Because I fucked up big time when I was using that. He's using the Wisdom Ring. I forgot what that does. Success rate plus 20. Alright. Give you a strategy. Who wants to defend a lot? I guess Patton would want to defend, right? Since he's not really an attacker. No, then again, Patton is like a dungeon dweller. So I guess this is really good for Cordoba, technically. But because Cordoba wants to be solo, he might better be better off with having a wisdom ring. Hmm. I guess I can put this on Horain for now. By Lord, for now, I'll put it to someone else. Just for this turn. Probably Soul. Who do I have the exclusive nurse on? It's on Hunty. Hunty right now is at 200. So I don't think she needs that anymore. I'm gonna, probably going to use that on Freak. So that they all have a decent amount of troops. And now we want to go Harem on Sill. So that we can have her into the party again. Lisa's castle. Rance's bedroom. Enter. Now hurry over here. You're probably happy since it's been so long. I'm gonna fuck you. Rance faced Syl and extended his hands towards her. However, Syl took a step back from Rance and looked at him with sad eyes. What? 
Don't want to do it? Hmm? Just a bit of discontent was present in her words. To become the king of Lises, you think I had any other reason to marry Leah? What are you hesitating for? I'm gonna jam it in by force if you do that. Patreon.com says it's IQSK. But nothing. I only did what I needed to get what I wanted. Whether I've got a wife or kids or whatever, I'm still me. Nobody compares to me. <laughs> hey, stop your complaining. You're a slave. Do you think you're in a position where you get, you get to complain? Or did you even want to marry me? You're no more than a slave. What are you crying about? Did you think that because I got married, you'd be released from being, a, being my slave? Hey, stop crying. Listen well. You're my personal slave. I never intend to let you go. So you work for me, okay? Then do it. Take your clothes off right now. <laughs> Certainly. Ah, what a character, this guy. Rance ripped Sil's clothes while he pushed her onto the bed. I think my gahaha is back, man. Hmm. Really tired, as expected. After seven times, as yet stated, Rance was sprawled out on the bed. Sil, probably also tired, sat next to Rance and stared at him. Huh. I just saved you because I felt like it. Well, appreciate it. Serve me until you die. Well, that'd probably be fine. I doubt you'll be much use, but... I'll permit you to form a unit for now. Sil joined Rance's army. Alright, that's good. Now, what should I do? Should I attack Mars? If I attack Mars, I can probably not... Hmm. I can probably not defend Elisa's castle so that I can get X. I think that's what we're gonna do. I don't think it's a good idea for me to attack Hellman right now. Like, I'm probably going to be going in, in war with Hellman for quite a while, so... I'm going to go conquer Mars and then try to take Japan while doing that. So let's go take uh, Mars here real quick. Hopefully this isn't too tough, but we do have Boris. Use Force. Boris, you're all we need. Nice, plus 10%. You can get Mars as a general if you negotiate, but there's a random chance that he's going to kidnap one of your women, like every start of a turn, so he's really dangerous if you want to get him. So the best thing for him to, or for, the best thing for you to do if you do get him, the next turn, use him like specifically as a suicide bomber later on when we're fighting Zeth. Debris fell left and right. In the middle of it, Mars the Great appeared, staggering on the verge of death. Mars the Great was laughing without opening his mouth. In his left hand was a dagger. With no hesitation, Mars the Great stabbed the silver tip deep into his throat. Still smiling, Mars the Great died and fell to the ground with a thud. Mars the Great resurrected and reached his hands to the sky. Mars the Great turned to look behind him, to the debris under which were his fallen countrymen. Mars the Great chanted a strange spell and did a strange dance, and the once dead warriors tottered up. They were undead warriors. The place Mars the Great pointed to was Lises. Well, 
thankfully, it's a pretty... Like, the unit that he has is pretty weak, so... I don't think it's actually too much of an issue to... Fight him. Lisa's castle, nearby plains. In those plains, Mars the Great was doing a bizarre swaying dance behind the revived warriors. Mars the Great's hands waved elegantly, and the speechless, rotting warriors began to advance to Lisa's castle. And there we go. We actually don't want to defend here. Abandon. Just leave it. I don't care. Well, if we have to, we could just build another castle or something somewhere else. There was a small hill that overlooked Lisa's castle. A mass was gathered on it. It was a mass of people. People wearing white armor. Looking at Lisa's castle was X, the man that betrayed and was banished from Lisa's. An air of tension drifted through the troops. The group of white knights led by X ran down the hill towards Lisa's castle. Lisa's castle, audience room. White. X. That traitor? He's actually really good, by the way. Yeah, he has a shit ton of units, but... I feel like, uh... Mars the Great isn't going to win. <laughs> I mean, this is gonna take a while. But yeah, he's a pretty weak unit. Lisa's castle, audience room. So it's a pretty good idea to put like uh, your weaker units there to level them up by fighting him. X, Lisa's former white general was before Rance. So X, why did you help Lisa's? You rebelled against this country out of hatred for it, correct? You can easily get Camilla's party to attack Rance castle before you like finish off like, before you try to get the people in the free cities, but the more countries or the more neighboring towns that you get, the more neighboring territories that you get, the higher the chance that Camilla isn't going to attack Lisa's castle, sadly. She did attack Lisa's before, but like I said, I wasn't really sure whether that was the correct play or not to get X. That explain explanation makes no sense at all. X bowed deeply while kneeling, then stood up. What does she mean by that? Huh. <sighs> well, fine then. What's that dumb face you're making? I'm generous. I said I'm forgiving him. In exchange, don't betray me again. I don't forgive failure twice. You live for me alone now. Thus, X was reinstated as Lisa's white general. Alright, they're attacking. And hopefully we have... What do you call it? Hopefully we have those guys in the back. Who is it? Uh, Isoroku. Okay, Isoroku is there. So I can probably try to focus fire on Noberu. But I don't think we're going to be able to beat up Isoroku. We don't nearly have enough firepower. Good. Keep attacking Cordoba. Yeah, these archers are actually super weak. Isoroku isn't bad. But the archers are surprisingly a lot weaker than I thought. Maybe it's because they're also like, uh... 
having the city limit instead of using all their main forces. So that's also a thing. Even then, though, I still feel like they're quite weak. Thank you for killing yourself. Alright, Rick leveled up, that's good. Lisa's castle, dining room. Rance and Leo were having lunch. What's going on here? What a bother. I'll eat myself. What? Someone's bugging us in the middle of a meal. Who is it? Morris. What's wrong? Why were you running and looking for me? Also, I'm eating right now. If it's about work, leave it for later. What? Aw, oh, shit. It's the, the thing that happened with uh, Freya. What? Everywhere in Lises, I think I'm, I'm one turn too late. I don't know if I can actually still recover from this shit. But how did this just suddenly happen? An enemy? Hellman? How could those Hellman losers do this to us? What were the guards doing? They were slacking off. If we have to, how much will that cost, though? What? That's ridiculous! Whatever! Just do something! Oh shit, I'm actually one turn too late. Fuck! Diphtheria. Freya, the ninja hired by Hellman, got a large reward and set off on an aimless journey with Norimaki. This is a shame. I don't know if I have to really reload my game from the start or something at this point. Because that is not something you want happening. Hellman, Plant City Laund Laurengrad, 2nd Army HQ. Iris Tolis was sitting at a large desk in the command room, reading a report from a spy. Convert took some photos out of his pocket and handed them to Aristolis. Uh, that's a weird photo you have, <laughs> Convert. Aristolis went to his own world for a bit. Aristolis snatched the letter from Convert. My beloved Aristolis, I've heard about your efforts from all the way in Langbao. When you try hard, it encourages me to try hard too, so please do your best. Then, when this war is over, let's have a meal together. I look forward to hearing stories of your heroism directly. Until next time, Sheila. This is not good. I don't know if I have money. I have zero money! I, I can't do this. I feel like we're gonna lose. I legit have zero money. Just leave it. I don't care. Shut up! I don't care what you think. I think I have to reload my game. Wowza, this is... This is disgusting. This is disgusting! Well... Oh my god. If I do reload, I'm probably going to have to like play super aggressively. God, this is horrible. Yeah, that you can see how Freya really fucks you up, right?
You really don't want Freya to fuck you up like that. She is disgusting. So when I... I guess I'll pause the recording here and when I get back to you guys, the, the month and date might be different. Because I'm gonna be playing a bit more optimally. Lisa's castle. Sil's room. But yeah, I forgot just how destructive Freya actually does to your, like, resources. Sil was putting her greatest effort into knitting. Sil was knitting some socks for Rand since he decided to attack Hellman. They were green. Sil prayed while working on her knitting. God. Yeah, I don't think we want to continue with that. We lost three. One, two, three. Yeah, we lost three territories. No, four in fact. Holy shit. But yeah, I feel like I gotta reload after that. Reload from the beginning. That's the, like, dumb part. But I guess it's fine. I guess I can try to get Lil Yukov too while I'm at it. So, this is going to be like a really long pause in between the recording session, but I will see you guys in one second with the power of editing. Hello, Azai here. Just wanted to show you guys Satila's uh, H scene because right now I'm actually running out of events for people that I want to do on. So I'll be doing some jump cuts on this episode, showing you like Satila's H scene along with probably Manad's since I want to do their events. But yeah, without further ado, let's actually do Satila's here. A demon who lost to me in a duel, so she's letting me have sex with her like she promised. She's really sensitive, and when a sex expert like me touches her even a little, she comes. She's cute. This is mostly going to be for people on Patreon, but you guys on YouTube will at least see the before and after the sex scene. Lisa's castle, Rance's bedroom. Alright, I'll call Satila. She won't disobey me anymore. So I can do whatever I want. <laughs> Satella was summoned at Rance's command. Hey! That stone doll's in the way. Make him leave. Caesar was standing behind Satella. He didn't react at all to what Rance said. Caesar reluctantly left the room. Now, time to receive you. Come over here. Rand sat cross-legged on the bed. What is it? Scared? <laughs> of course not. Now come. Patreon.com says Zaykiosuke. Satella slowly approached the bed. <laughs> okay. Did we not have sex with her? What the fuck? Yeah. The stone doll. Who said you could come in? I wasn't hurting her, jeez. Ah, man, I've gotten soft. I don't feel like doing it anymore. Stone doll, take Satila and leave. Satila was lying under bed. She had passed out, possibly due to all due to all the orgasms. Caesar gently picked up Satila and wordlessly left Rance's room. Ah, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, with that, I will be going back to doing what I'm doing. So, I'll see you guys in a couple of seconds, all right? Hello, and I am back. So, we're not doing the event for Minad yet, but we are going to try to get Gandhi here real quick. You get Gandhi by levying on Zeo. And because right now I have some time before I have to go through, you know, like, uh, Hellman. We're gonna be doing this real quick before we get Soul and Sil. A gigantic man watched from behind a pillar, the pillaging... Behind a pillar, the pillaging, under the name of a levy. It was Gandhi. Karu started to run off when... 
They heard a scream from a back alley. In the back alley, they found the old man that was the source of the scream being assaulted by thugs. The ruffians approached the old man, all swinging their own weapon around. Cornered, the old man's knees shook. The bl black man's axe descended towards the old man when... Something yellow flew into the axe and knocked it out of his hand with incredible speed. The Mach Pio landed on Gandhi's shoulder and he entered the valley. His giant shadow fell on the ruffians. Now that the old man had scurried away, it was the ruffian's turn to be afraid. Kaoru grinned and rolled up her sleeves, which Shida drew her sword in an instant. Gotta say, I really like this old Gandhi version better. The sprite anyway. The new Gandhi feels like he's not as muscular, you know? He's not as... Alpha. Everyone present couldn't believe their ears. All eyes focus on Gandhi, who is standing full of confidence. You're so dumb, Gandhi. Gandhi left with a great laugh. Uchida hurriedly followed, and Karu bowed deeply and trotted off. The ruffians watched dumbfounded as the strange group faded in the distance, clutching the bunch of money. Filling Thug's pockets, another day of changing the world. Gandhi party, where will they go? <laughs> so stupid. Alright, I'll see you guys in a tiny bit again. And we are back. This time, I'm actually going to show you guys Manad's scene. Lisa's castle, Ranz's bedroom. Ranz summoned Manad. <laughs> Manad, huh? How should I handle her? Maybe. <laughs> Late. She's taking a while. I know a woman has to prepare, but this is taking too long. I couldn't show you, by the way, because I was mashing the button too quickly. But I talked to Maria, and I'm able to make uh, what she wants to make, which is basically like a tulip research facility. Hey, somebody. Call? Alright, good. Then... It should be obvious, because you're cute. That's that. This is this. Girls all come in different flavors, and it's my right alone to taste them all. So like I said, that's that. This is this. Now take your clothes off. Huh? You don't want to have sex with me. Minot ran out of the room. I don't really care whether anyone I want to fuck has a lover or not, though. This is lame. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have to progress through Manat scene a bit more before anything happens. But I'll see you guys in a bit once again. And we're back. This time, we're progressing through Gandhi's scene again. A gigantic man watched from behind a pillar, the pillaging under the name of Levi. It was Gandhi. And then... They heard a scream from a back alley. Is this gonna happen every single time? Is he gonna give them money again? In the alley, they found three Lisa soldiers surrounding women. woman. 
Uh, they're gonna have sex, so are you going to actually give Wichita and Kaoru, Gandhi? If you are, <laughs> this guy truly is magnanimous. One of the soldiers grabbed the woman's color when... Something yellow flew with incredible speed into the side of the soldier's face. Gandhi appeared, along with Uchida, Kaoru, and Yashichi, the mock, the mock Pio. Uchida drew her sword and Kaoru took an old-style jujutsu stance. Kaoru hurled away one of the Lisa soldiers without giving him time to prepare. Okay, no sex with them. I guess he's not that magnanimous, right? Ah! Come on! <laughs> this guy. This guy is insane. Wow, you also insulted them too. What the fuck, man? Uchida thrust her sword at the screaming soldier's throat, stopping right before it. Kaoru dropped her, her hakama. The Lisa soldier ran away. <laughs> You're not gonna take like a free meal? I would have probably done so. Giving men love, baffling even Lisa soldiers. The city of Red had a fine day. Man, these guys are insane. Alright, I'll see you guys uh, on the next one. For the finale for Ga Gandhi's scene. Okay, this is a scene with Rick that I don't think I've seen yet. Rick sealed the letter. He was sending a letter before. So I'm, I, miss I clicked a few sentences before that. So I'll show you guys this. Layla entered the tent, her face almost somehow sad. Layla was determined. Rick looked at Layla. Her legs were trembling and there were tears in her eyes. Layla turned away from Rick. Rick wordlessly took Layla's hand. Wow, I'm actually getting so many so much more events now <laughs> after playing optimally. Who would have thought, right? Layla jumped into Rick's chest. This is the way to get Layla's good ending, by the way, and a fortune ending for her. To make her go out with Rick. That's why you have to d multiple, like, deploy them multiple times. Rick gently placed a hand on Layla's shoulder. Wish there was actually, like, a happy, like, BGM playing here. Kind of awkward for them to just not say anything. And hello, we are back again. For this time, like I said, the finale to Gandhi's event till we get... And we are gonna get him. After this, we're actually gonna get the H scene for Layla. Surprisingly, after Rick and Layla got together, you do get a special H scene after that. Which is going to be the last H scene that we do get with Layla. A gigantic man watched from behind a pillar, the pillaging under the name of Alevi. It was Gandhi.
sure, whatever you say, Gandhi. Oh, that's it? Aw. Oh, I guess there must be like some other event after this. I guess it's going to be like at the start of the turn after this. But alright, might as well show you guys the H scene for Layla right now. And after that, I will be like doing my own thing again. Lisa's castle, Rance's bedroom. Rance was waiting for Layla. Mm-hmm. She's gonna let me fuck her this time. If she refuses, I'll just tie her up. That'll be fun. Hey, it's open. Now let's do it. Not letting you run away today. That technique's banned from the start. Can we fuck as soon as you're done talking? If so, then... I got it. I'll listen just a bit. Layla blushed over what she was trying to say. Huh? Uh... The guy you told me you have unrequ unrequited love for? Layla's face became, became more girlish and, and she laughed softly. Ah! Don't make that face in front of me! It's annoying! So... Who is it? If your love is mutual now, that means you're gonna date, right? Tell me who it is. What? What? You mean that, Rick? Really? Uh... No! Not that! Rents cowered and whined on his bed like a kid. Th then, let me have sex with you one last time. After that, fine. It sucks, but... If you refuse, I'll kill Rick! Yeah, I'll kill him! Please, Layla. Just one more time. That's all I ask. When I remember our time together, it'll be frustrating, but I'll give you my blessing. Man, she's such a pushover. If you refuse, I'll kill Rick and lock you up in a cell to keep to keep all to myself. Yeah, I'll do that. I really will. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Patreon.com says it's IQSK. I know. A man doesn't go back on his word. Doing it with Layla. Been a while. <laughs> For a while here, she wouldn't let me put it in. Let's fuck then. Layla undid the class on her armor. Don't make that face. Okay. They took their clothes off and collapsed into bed. <sighs> that was good. It was probably good for you too. But even though you enjoyed it... How about one more time? Okay, okay. Well, if I have to, I guess I can accept it if it's Rick. Rance reluctantly gave up on Layla. <laughs> oh god. And with that, Layla's uh, scenes are actually done. Let me see. I think I have to talk to Minot now to trigger meeting her boyfriend, so let's actually do that before I get out of you guys as, uh, you know, I disappear again for a couple of seconds. I got X, by the way. Where's Minot? Hmm. Maybe I'll meet with Minot. Lisa's castle. Barracks area. There were excited voices and the sounds of swords clanging against each other. Come to think of it, Minot's army's barracks is around here. Rance walked towards the noise towards the source of the noise. Minot's sword fell towards a soldier. The soldier stumbled away from Minot's intimidating attack and lost his balance. Minot knocked away the soldier's sword. Minot spoke to the soldier with a different face than she had while she was swinging her sword. Guess you're more than just Rick's adjutant. That was pretty good. All the present soldiers kneeled towards Rance. Well done, Minot. What? 
Monot timidly but with shining eyes asked Rance, Oh wait, I think I've already seen this event. I guess it, the, the scene with her boyfriend is going to be a start of a turn event. Shit. Well, I'm in a good mood today. Alright, I'll fight you. Come at me, because I feel like I remember this scene. Rance picked up a sword intended for mock battles. Monot stood straight up and took her sword stance. The surrounding area was covered in a strange tension. Sudden Rance attack! Man, I wish he does that stupid at the attack. <laughs> that stupid thing again with his Rance attack. Monod, Monod was still in her initial stance, but there was no sword in her hand. The sword was stabbed into the ground nearby. <laughs> <laughs> that I'm strong is a commonly known fact. You have a lot of improving to do, Minod. Train hard. Despite losing, Minod was cheerful. See ya, Minod. Yeah, sadly, I don't think we're gonna see her boyfriend yet. But I will see you guys in a tiny bit. I'll be attacking... Like, Hellman soon, too. Oops. I, uh... Clicked a couple sentences here, but this is the ending for Gandhi's scene. But yeah, a riot started when, when we were, like, eating with Leah. What? A riot? So what's the goal of the riot? What do they want? Huh. If they don't have bread, then they could just eat sweets instead. What idiots. What do I care about their problems? I won't let them defy me. Beat down the rioters. But yeah, we gotta do this to get Gandhi to join us. I don't know what happens if you actually give them food. Don't care. The whole country's at war right now. Everyone everywhere is suffering. I won't let them get away with selfishly rioting just to get food for themselves. Ah. Hmm. This is gross. This is unacceptably bad. Rance flipped the curry bread tray and stomped on it. Whatever. I'm gonna head out and beat down those poor people whining about not having bread. <laughs> poor. You pieces of shit! If you got time to riot, go home and do your fucking job! The subjugation unit led by Rance suppressed the riot with the force of a mad god. A gigantic man was watching the situation from behind a pillar. It was Gandhi. Gandhi watched Rance flail his sword. Hey! Get out of here! Go home and do some menial labor or something! <laughs> <laughs> Poor people are so weak since they don't eat. This is fun. <laughs> yeah, got some crap in my eye. God damn it, Rance. Some dust from the battlefield flew into Rance's eye. Yeah, making me tear up. Yeah, fucking dust. This sucks. I'm leaving. Let's withdraw. Enough. The riot was suppressed. Everyone, withdraw. Rance's unit withdrew, leaving Gandhi standing there stupefied. <laughs> so stupid, Gandhi. I mean, he's not wrong, but that's not really his real intention, Gandhi. Sure, whatever you say, man. Keep making those, like, misunderstandings. Hot tears stream down Gandhi's cheeks.
This guy is something else, man. Lisa's castle, audience room. Two troops. Sounds like he's going through tough times. Who is he? Gandhi. Never heard of him. Maybe Zet's in some trouble and he's betraying them for us. Does he look strong? Yeah, middle-aged guy, huh? How about his troops? Hmm, women. Are they hot? I assume they're not middle-aged hags. Why didn't you say so sooner? Good, I'll meet with them. Then I'll decide. Call them here. Gandhi's party was called to meet with Rance. So. Hmm, good women. Spunky and sexy. What are these two good girls doing with such with this old dude? Unacceptable. Yeah. Rance ignored Gandhi, kneeling respectfully and introducing himself, and instead gazed at his two assistants. Hmm? Huh? What? Well, I don't need some useless middle-aged guy. I'll hire those two girls. Hey, what are you laughing about? You're useless! Hurry up and get out! I don't care about having a man's admiration. Hmm. Hmm. Alright. If you let me have sex with those girls, then I'll hire you. I see. Then good. You three work for me now then. Work hard. <laughs> the girls are enough on their own. I'll just send the old guy to the front line and get him killed. <laughs> that guy is actually really strong though, Rance. Let's take a look at Gandhi. A large magic warrior. His unit is made up entirely of women attracted to him. The way they put their lives in line to fight for him is truly admirable. Uses this special attack, Evil Purging Overlord's Light. But yeah, he has like 12 HP. He's insane. So, before I send you guys off, let me actually go show off Kaoru and Wichita. Because after they, ap they have sex like once or twice, I believe, they're gonna become a unit. A girl that came with Gandhi, like a gift from the heavens. She's pretty and comes off like she's pretending to be ditzy. She has a nice body, so I should aim to do her 100 times. Lisa's castle, Francis' bedroom. Alright, today, I'll call that Eastern-style girl that came with Gandhi. Kakusan, he calls her. Oh, what a nice present I got. Would have been better without coming with a middle-aged man and all, but... Oh, you're here? Good. Come in. Kaoru gracefully entered the room. Um, Kakusan. I assume that's not your real name. What is it? Mm-hmm. Kaoru, huh? Cute name. What does he call you Kakusan? Huh. A novel. Gandhi sure is a poser. Now, Kaoru, for the reason I called you, I'm sure you remember my condition for hiring Gandhi. Mm-hmm. I do. Now take your clothes off and get over here. <laughs> Patreon.com says IQSK. Man, we're getting so many H scenes in this one episode because I fucked up Freya's scenes. Rance took Kaoru's kimono off in an instant and took her to the bed. Ah, <sighs> all right. Did it five times in all. Something Gandhi could never do at his age, I'm sure. Not only that, I really made use of my technique. I should definitely have been better than Gandhi. How is that, Kaoru? Good, I assume. I don't care about that. I'm asking if I was better than Gandhi. Ah, <sighs> are you talking about that? 
Kaoru gracefully left the room. Wait a second! What does that mean? Ugh. Damn you, Gandhi! I'll have you beheaded! <laughs> Alright, I guess we're not gonna get her scene yet to make her into a unit, but... I'll see you guys uh, after I see I get a new scene. Okay, sorry about that. I didn't think this was a new scene, but... This is the start of the scene where Kaoru is changing into a unit. But yeah, Rance was like reading a novel before this. Tch. Gandhi? I don't really want to see a man's face in the morning, but... Whatever. Call him. If he's with Kaoru, then I'll deal with it. Gandhi and Kaoru were called by Morris to the throne. I appreciate the flattery. What do you want? Kaoru smiled and bowed. Be of service. I've already gotten plenty out of her. If you know what I mean. Shut up. I don't want a man's hope. Yeah, shut up. This is sickening. You too, Gandhi. I'm cutting you down. A spy? So as a ninja... Hmm... Will she really be okay? She just looks like a typical young lady. Huh. Impressive. Old jujutsu, huh? Hmm. Alright, sure. But if I call you at night, come immediately. If you use your job as an excuse to ditch, you're gonna get punished. Shut up, Gandhi. Ka Kaoru Quinshi Kagura, also known as, known as Kakusan, became a ninja. Alright, before I do anything, I will show you guys what she has seen. We need to do hers twice to get her into a ninja. I don't think I need to do anyone else's after that. So yeah, we'll do this. Lisa's castle. Francis' bedroom. Now, today I should play with that Suke-san girl that came with Gandhi. Rance caught Suke-san. Can't wait. <laughs> She's taking a while. Damn it! Does she intend to ridicule the king? I'll beat her. Rance was about to leave the bedroom when he noticed somebody talking in front of the room. Hmm? What's going on out there? Maybe I should listen. Lisa's castle, hallway. A little ways from the door to Rance's bedroom, Wichita was pleading to Gandhi. Man, Gandhi, you're crazy, dude. Wichita hung her head despondently and Gandhi looked down on her kindly. Gandhi gave a desolate smile, like that of a father's. He's a great hero, sure, Gandhi. Oh, here she comes. I should get back to my bed. Wichita quietly parted from Gandhi. In front of the door, she turned around like she changed her mind. We should have hugged Gandhi and her lips met his. Their lips slowly parted and Wichita's heels returned to the floor. She gazed right, th right at Gandhi, already back to her typical firm expression. Well, you're not gonna be getting that in Rand 6, Wichita. <laughs> God. Wichita bowed and opened the door to Rand's bedroom. 
Lisa's castle, Rance's bedroom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Having just eavesdropped on her conversation with Gandhi, I got, I've got a pretty complicated feeling. All right, well, Suke-san. I see. Then with Shida, my nails are long. Clip them for me. While Rance sat on the bed, Kushida got in front of him and politely clipped his nails. So, Gandhi's the one that told you to offer your body and soul to me, right? Alright. And that's okay with you? Why do you respect Gandhi so much? He just looks like a weirdo to me. Well, not on Shinoda's level, but... Oh, I wonder if we don't have Shinoda, he would Rance wouldn't say that. Yeah. <sighs> What do you think about me, then? Well, I certainly am a hero, but... Even with that question, you brought it back to Gandhi. It's always about him. Yeah, I'm the king! I guess I'll have to educate her on that a little. I have to teach her that I'm a greater, more exceptional person than Gandhi is. Stop clipping my nails. Patreon.com says is IQ, okay? Rance suddenly spoke in a low voice, causing Wichita to stiffen a bit. As the king, I order you to attend to me tonight. Take your clothes off. Wichita slowly stood up and removed her shoes. After a bit of thought, she started by removing her shoulder pads. Hmm? Rance's appreciative gaze wrapped around Wichita. After her shoulder pads, she moved to removing her outer garments. Mm-hmm. Going down next? Her chiding voice quivered slightly. She pulled down her stockings with her awkward hands. Looking is one of the king's rights. You got some nice legs. They're pretty. Her skirt dropped to the floor, and her long, white legs were exposed. Hmm. What is it? Then, her hand stopped. Ushira took completely, stood completely still with her fingers on her neck. Are you not gonna follow Gandhi's order? What Ushira said seemed to be true. She looked frozen even up to her lips, pale and shivering. Huh. <sighs> As a virgin, I guess you can't make it past just showing your panties. <laughs> Poor Ushira, man. But alright, I will see you guys, uh, in a bit. <laughs> Poor Wichita, though. Hello. I am back. And this time, we got, uh, Log B without defeating Lelyukov. So right now, we are gonna be showing you guys how to get Lelyukov. Helmin, Plant City Archgrad. Due to Lisa's attack, Hellman soldiers all over the city were working continuously. In the midst of the bloodthirsty atmosphere, one girl knocked on the door to the headquarters. Hellman First Army HQ, General Lilyukov's room. Amiran placed the bag with food inside in front of Lilyukov. Amiran's father, Lelyukov, and his wife got married in a church in the city. It was Amiran's dream since she was a child to marry in the same church and live happily with her husband. That dream would be realized tomorrow. However, the Lisa's army was right on the cusp of attacking. I don't know about that, Lelyukov. Lelyukov remained silent as he hugged Amiran.
Yeah, he's going to be going here, like, defending this place alone. The soldier bowed and ran off to inform the whole army. Man, poor guy. This guy is actually a competent commander. Sadly, Hellman is, uh, so dumb. Amiran looked concerned and left her father's room. Lelyukov faced Langbao where Sheila was and kneeled. But yeah, the reason why we can't get Lelyukov before is that with, her, with him being captured right on the first night, he's not gonna show like uh, show up with the scene with Amiran, so we don't know about Amiran. That night, the imposing army was quiet. As Lelyukov ordered, the whole force was retreating to Rosegrad to prepare to intercept the enemy there. Except one man, a soldier was standing at the entrance to the town. It was Lelyukov. He remained in the town alone to fight for his daughter's dream. It was a clear violation of orders. Lelyukov silently closed his eyes and stood immobile, like he was made of stone. The wind blew fiercely. His hair and beard swayed. His eyelids slowly moved under his blowing hair. Ten Hellman soldiers stood in front of Lelyukov. The ten of them laughed together. They were clearly pushing their limits, but none of them were pessimistic. Everyone's hearts were warm to fulfill one girl's dream. Those ten tried to protect the city from the Lisa's army alone. You guys are so gonna get fucked. But alright, I'll see you guys in a bit. This is just Patton, like, uh, doing his revolution again. Okay, there's actually a start of a turn event with Syl here. Interesting. Lisa's castle, Syl's room. Syl was putting her greatest effort into knitting. Wait, w did I already see this event? Syl was knitting some socks for Rand since he decided to attack Hellman. Oh, I think we already see this. Okay, so I can skip this. Okay. Seeing a new event here where Lelikov was attacking. But yeah, you actually have to not attack it the turn after you conquer Log B. The next turn, don't attack it. You have to wait for one turn. The day Archgrad was guarded by Lelikov and 10 warriors alone had ended. Because, you know, like that day, Atmiran was actually doing her wedding right. So if you attack at that point, Atmiran will not go through with the wedding. We actually need the wedding to go through. It was the day of Lelikov's daughter, Amiran's wedding. The Lisa's army didn't attack. Lelikov was in front of the church she got married in so long ago. You actually have to do like so much specific thing for this guy. I guess it makes sense, right? Since he is an enemy general. So he's not going to join you that easily. Amiran gently took Lelikov's hand. Amiran buried her face in Lelyukov's chest and cried. He gently put his hands on her shoulders. When Amiran's body was gently pulled by her, her husband, she left Lelyukov. Well, if you're fighting me right now, Lelyukov, just know that you are gonna get shit on. Just know. Let's see if we are fighting him. Ah, oh, Lelyukov's not here. Alright, that's fine. They have archers, so we actually gotta finish off these archers here. Damn, Ron's getting shit on him. Alright, I'll see you guys once I do some more stuff, though. 
Hello, I am back. Man, this is actually like a lot, taking a lot longer than I thought. It's already almost like 11.30 p.m. right now. I actually played or started recording at like 7.30 or was it like 8 p.m.? I might have to like call it after doing this um, scene. At least uh, for the current session. I'm not sure. Maybe I will, like, uh, still record this tomorrow after I'm done. Or, you know, like, basically, this whole episode is not done yet. I do want to get the, the part where I was at previously on this one episode, at the very least. But yeah, I still need to find Freya, like, three more times, so at the very least, I need three more turns. Lisa's castle, Rance's bedroom. Hmm. I can't stand with shit as Gandhi infa infatuation disease. I have to cure it with my great love. We should have politely bowed and entered. Mm hmm. Shall we get right to it then? Patreon.com says this What? Are you dis disobeying me? I'm Gandhi's master. Hmm? A request? As a ninja? This is so sudden though. I see. It's probably because of Gandhi. He ordered you, I assume. And you actually want to keep working for Gandhi instead, I assume. Yeah. It's always Gandhi, 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 Gandhi. Ah, what should I do? On one hand, I could use her, but... I should forever be using her only because of Gandhi. Should I use her? Alright, I'll make you a ninja. From today on, you work directly under me, okay? But, I'm doing what I was going to do. Come here, let me cure your Gandhi infatuation disease. Ah, that was really delicious. Pretty good, Washita. By the way, Washita, you're just thinking about how Gandhi would have been better, weren't you? Then what were you thinking just now? Weren't you thinking about Gandhi while we fucked him? No buts. Punishment. We're doing it until morning. Get naked. <laughs> oh man, yeah. Rance. Rance and Washita continued throughout the night. Alright, I'll see you guys once uh, I get to a new scene. And I'm back. This time we got Isoroku, by the way. Lisa's army, headquarters. You may not. Rance lazily waved his hand. It was a joke. Do you think I would take a man seriously? The knight frantically tried to resist falling to his knees. So what is it? If you brought them here to me, then I assume it isn't a man. Guess you all understand by now. <laughs> the knight shouts signal two soldiers to come in, carrying a woman b between them. Oh, she's pretty hot. Hey, you. Mm-hmm. You've got good judgment. I'm giving you a reward. Be glad. Mm-hmm. Here. Rance gave the knight a small, filthy shell. Be glad. Yeah. Do whatever you want with it. I want to talk with her, with her for a while. Have all the soldiers go outside. The knight respectfully bowed and let the soldiers outside. He sure was happy to get that shell that was in my soup last night. Weird guy. Anyway, you. What's your name? Huh. I was assuming you wouldn't respond, but I guess you're pretty obedient. I don't like how you talk though. It's pretty rough. Try to be cuter.
Is Soroku maintain her fortitude even as a prisoner? Rance approaches Soroku. Rance's finger ran along Isoroku's white nape. Want me to cut through this neck? Isoroku shut her eyes. Hmm. This neck. The feeling of the finger on her neck disappeared. Isoroku bit her lip hard. It wasn't because she would be beheaded. It was due to the end of the Yama Yamamoto bloodline. Suddenly, the presence of the person next to her vanished. Isoroku opened her eyes. Rance was looking down on Isoroku from a little ways away. No, that would be such a waste. I'm giving you the special privilege of working for me. Your subordinates are outside. Use them to fight under me. Isoroku was suddenly furious, like a fire was ignited inside her. I'm letting you live. Why do you have to be mad? Isoroku's spit flew from her mouth as she screamed at Rance. Well, got no choice then. If you're gonna go that far, then I'll just kill you all. Rance muttered disinterestedly. Isoroku's expression changed. You and your subordinates outside are all gonna get executed. Huh. What am I supposed to do with soldiers that have no general? Rance pretended to think for a bit. Hmm, how about I execute all their wives and children too then? I'm joking, that would be way more trouble than it's worth. But your answer might change my mind. However much trouble it is, I could end up following through with it. Rance whistled, heading far off from his original goal. Ha! Rance gave a big smile, approached Soroku, put his hands on his hips and thrust out his chest. Then you'll swear a loyalty to me. Also, stop talking like that. Mm-hmm. That's cuter. Rance nodded with satisfaction. Thus, Japan's female general, Isoroku Yamamoto, joined Rance. Alright, I'll see you guys in a bit. Man, I think I am going to be like sleeping a bit later just so that I can finish this. Tomorrow I do want to record a new episode for this. And I am back. This time let's actually talk to Isoroku so that we can get her scene. God, I'm actually getting super sleepy, but I gotta persevere. Just one more turn until we actually get to the point where we were at. I guess this might be the last thing I do though. Technically speaking, I'm I mostly like uh, got all of the areas that I want. What haven't been done is actually me killing Ray, because right now Mary is actually still alive, and the Pope is also still alive because I don't have Gerwin, since I was focusing on getting Freya right. So I guess I'll just show you guys what the hell we're gonna be doing on this turn. So first things first, I already found Freya in Allen. I think it's actually predetermined that like where Freya is. So last time she was in West Parapara Para Fortress, and also in Allen, and this time she was actually in those three areas too. The fort area I haven't found, so I have to click through everywhere again. But all right. Let's talk to Isoroku, and after that, have sex with her, and we're gonna try to get... I don't know, maybe we're slowly going to try to get to Osaka. We can also try to get to Patton, but that would make me have to fight the third army, the second and fourth army. So maybe I'll have to with, like, uh, come up with that sometime soon. Hmm. Maybe I'll meet with us with Isoroku. Lisa's castle, audience room. Morris, call Isoroku. A short time later, Isoroku appeared in the audience room. Isoroku's question was somehow stiff. It could have been due to the way she spoke or her ill will towards Rance. Isoroku, I was thinking of giving you a special duty. Me. Rance puffed out his chest. I'm ordering you to be my woman. 
You're too cute to just be a general. So I figured I'd give you permission to have sex with me. How about that? I assume you're glad. Rance laughed heartily. In contrast, Isoroku kept a straight face and stared at Rance. What? The direct response nearly made Rance fall off the throne. Isoroku, are you disobeying the king's order? Rance threatened, I threatened I that's so hard for me to say, threatened, there we go, Isoroku in a strong tone, but she showed no sign of being perturbed. What? Rance couldn't believe his ears and assumed he misheard, but he felt the determination in the eyes of Isoroku that were locked on him. Rance looked at Isoroku's eyes again. She's serious. Damn it. All this business about restoring her family. I don't get how Japanese people think. Isoroku murmured. Oh, what is it? Tell me. Isoroku glanced at Leah and Morris. Leah? Leah! Go back to your room for a little while. Leah trembled. She stared at Rance with a look of disbelief. Morris, deal with Leah. Take her away. Leah was dragged by Morris out of the room. Don't worry about it. She's just selfish. So, what do you want to talk about? Isoroku hit her embarrassed face and stumbled over her words. So she is capable of looking more girlish. Cute. Isoroku raised her head like she had decided on something. Wouldn't you need to have sex with me then? I thought you didn't want to. Hey Isoroku, why are you so obsessed over your family? Rance thought for a bit. Hmm. Alright. Sure. Yeah. After some thought, it's a pretty good idea. I wouldn't want to entrust a country to someone I don't know at all. Also, Japan is... Why is it so different from the continent? Like the food and the clothes and the customs. All the officials I send there to, ma to manage it hate it. It's really annoying. It'd be best to just have a Japanese person do it. But barely anyone that works for me is from Japan. Yeah, sure. I'll give you all the kids you want. We'll churn them out. Isoroku's eyes grew moist. Teardrops ran down her cheeks and fell to the floor. But why are you crying? As though a dam broke, once Isoroku began crying, she couldn't stop the tears from flowing. Mm-hmm. Be thankful. Let's have lots of sex so you can get pregnant soon. Isoroku smiled while she wiped her, her eyes. Alright. Let's actually have sex with her. Where is she? There she is. She was a Japanese general, but I made her my subordinate because she's cute. Apparently, she wants a child that can carry on the Yamamoto family name. I should pump a bunch of thick stuff inside her. <laughs> Lisa's castle, Rance's bedroom. Man, she's taking a while. Ugh. It's been an hour since Rance called Isoroku to his room. When I call, it's her job to show herself immediately as my subordinate. No, as my woman. Sure took you long enough, Isoroku. How long are you planning to make me wait? Rance vigorously opened the door. You! What are you wearing? Isoroku was standing in front of the door, garbed in a white kimono. Misogi? What? So just taking a bath? Well, good thinking of you to wash yourself before the sex, in any case. I'll let you off easy. Let's get started soon then. Take off your clothes and lay, on, lay down in the bed. Did it hurt? Isoroku looked at Rance with some bitterness. 
Nothing you can do about it. That's how it is for everyone's first time. If you gave in to your feelings more, it might have stopped hurting, hurting sooner. Isoroku cut herself off. She faced France again. Hmm? What? Hmm, I wouldn't know. I usually come inside, but for some reason it doesn't seem to work. I mean, I don't have kids. Yeah, strangely enough. Isoroku's face showed shock for a moment, then changed the de dejection. It finally settled on anger. That wasn't my intention at all. If we keep doing it a lot, eventually you should have a kid. Isoroku grasped something she was holding in her hand. By the way, what's that thing you've been squeezing? Easy childbirth. Isn't that something you'd hold on to after the kid's been conceived? If you want a kid, wouldn't you want a charm that blesses you with children or something? Isoroku stared at the charm in her hand. Her face instantly turned red. You'd never be able to have a kid with that. <laughs> Renz laughed cruelly. Isoroku ran out of the room. She is pretty dumb. <laughs> she is, Renz. Alright, like I said, we're probably going to continue on with this turn right now. So, I'm going to go attack Nagasaki. And after that, we're going to end the turn and end at the start of the turn. Before that though, I think I haven't gone to the dungeon yet, so I'm gonna go to the bunny dungeon again. So I will pause the recording for now and go back when we attack Nagasaki there. Wow, I actually beat the the eighth girl, but there was a ninth girl on the bunny dungeon. What the fuck, man? I guess there is actually no end to that. That was crazy. Okay, we got the charge horn and the uh, exclusive nurse. Let me put that on someone real quick. We need some healing. Yeah, X needs some healing. S riding is for defense. I guess I can put Monod on defense duty. Charge horn is for attack. Arain. I guess I could put it on Gandhi for now. But alright. Let's save. Attack Nagasaki. And after this, we are going to be ending the episode. Let's see. Who do I want to attack with? I guess Rick. In the back line, probably Gandhi and Ron. Alright, we should be able to defeat them with this. Hopefully. We can probably try to kill... Katsui. Or we can also try to kill the warriors. Or the archers. But I guess we're gonna kill the, war the Katsui here. He's decently strong. Yeah, you guys are not gonna be able to... Damage my boy. Alright. He's slowly dying. Now I just probably want to... Weaken their armies here. Alright, kill yourself for me, Katsui. There we go. Oh, wow, it's actually not done. Holy shit. I thought that was gonna be done. I guess we gotta kill everyone here to win the battle. Did not expect that. Guess I'm gonna be after deploying one more unit after this. Which is probably going to be X. He should be able to handle this guy really easily. Even if he only has like 300 units left. Oh wow, okay, I can actually finish this guy off right now. Awesome. Only one turn.
All right. This is Osaka. Sado. We don't really need to take Sado. We can actually just take Osaka and we win against uh, Nobunaga. But all right. Let's save. And we are going to end after the start of the turn. So yeah, I've actually been fighting this guy for a couple of turns now. He's kind of weak. <laughs> He keeps sending these guys, right? The, like, undead army. But they're pretty weak. So I've only been, like, sending out people that I want to level up, which is usually, like, you know, these guys. But I should kind of be focusing, or not focusing, but... Try not to use too many people here. Not too many, like, good people, anyway. So you're going to be on auto defend them. Auto attack them. And you're auto defend them. Okay, yeah, see, even with, like, Soul, who is super weak, he's still not doing any damage. This guy is garbage. Dear God, this guy is garbage. He's a good source of experience, though, so that's that. Okay, Japan isn't attacking, which is good. Hellman isn't attacking. Oh, Freya. Alright, next turn, if I get her, she's not gonna be able to do her thing, though, thankfully. Fuck you, Freya. Fuck you for wasting my, like, money, man. I guess it's okay for me to actually, like, uh... You know replay the game because of that. I am having fun. Okay, we're gonna try to beat up Lel Yukov here. We're just gonna go defend him. Because I wanna beat up Lel Yukov. God damn it! Oh, I'm not leveled up. Forgot to put the... What is it? The popularity staff on her. Oh, what the hell is this? World of Monsters. Castle Ring Castle Forest. In a dark forest in the afternoon, Cableus' apostle Cabuan, Cabuan, Cabuan was walking with a huge letter in hand. Cabuan lost Cableus' love letter. Thus, Cabuan strayed from her duty. The letter Cableus poured his heart into would never reach Camilla's eyes. Oh, I thought that was gonna be a Kessel Rig, Kessel Ring's uh, event, but I guess um, we we can't really get that because. I think he only appears after you defeat Sig, and Sig only appears after you, you defeat Lei. Lisa's castle, audience room. Alright, after this event, we are gonna call it an episode for this, but man... I'm probably gonna try to recap what the hell I did. <laughs> Rance was reading the manga in the throne. Reading manga in the throne. Hey, what? Ah, oh, the person is in yeast. Thank you. Oh, I forgot the voice actor I ran. Sorry there. Ooh. <laughs> this guy's so dumb. But yeah, I guess uh, she's here. I guess that's where Freya is. But with that, I am going to call it an episode here. So the only difference that happened from last time is that this time we got Gandhi. We got Isoroku, we got, well, we got, we already got X before. But we also did not have Kincaid die. We don't have Gerwin yet. So what I'm gonna do next turn is probably go do the Yeast, get Freya, and then probably attack Osaka again. Yeah, I think what I'm gonna do is attack Osaka. Since I do still need to go to the AL Church to get Gerwin. 
And after that, we also need to go to the Ma Mari's house to kill Lei. Because I still don't have chaos, mind you. But yeah. That is going to be wh where I end the episode. Man, I actually replayed the game, like, quite a lot. <laughs> At least, like, four hours or something. I had fun doing it, though. But yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Give this video a like if you guys like it. Sub if you guys haven't. Patreon will be getting these episodes early access, along with everything uncensored. And the H scenes. And all that, you know, all the good stuff. And I will see you on the next episode. Peace.